Hey guys, it's Cece, and today I am here to talk about some queer 2020 releases. So I am doing this video and all of my anticipated releases videos a little differently in 2020. Instead of uploading a video every six months, I'm going to be uploading a video every three months. So this is going to be a video covering releases from January to March. The other change is that I am combining all queer releases into one video, so I'm not going to split this up by age group. This is a list that includes mostly YA and adult titles, but I believe there's at least one middle grade title this quarter of the year. So those are the changes. This is going to be a video dedicated to queer releases from January to March. I have so many to talk about. In the past, I've usually contained my anticipated releases videos to like 25 books per video, but I'm challenging myself with this one because 2020 is the gayest year in publishing that I think I've ever seen. Because in this video, just for three months of releases, I have 39 titles to talk about. And this isn't even a full comprehensive list of all of the queer books that are coming out in that time period. It's just the ones I personally want to read. Today, I'm talking about 39 queer books. I'm going to give you a rapid-esque summary, and I'm going to tell you the rep as far as I've been able to learn what it is. There are a couple of books where I'm not quite sure yet, but most of them I will be able to give you exact words and identities. I hope you enjoy this. I hope this new format works for you and that it's something I enjoy doing. If there is a format that you'd prefer that you'd like me to do instead, please leave me your thoughts down in the comments below. I make these videos primarily to educate, to uplift titles in any way possible. So if there is a better way to do that, I would love to hear what is going to work best for you. I know what books I'm anticipating. What this video is for is to let you know which books are going to have the rep you're looking for in the following year. If you want a full list of my anticipated releases, go ahead and check down in the description below. There's going to be a link to my Goodreads shelf for anticipated of 2020. You can look through like the 240 titles on there if you'd like. But yeah, let's just start from the beginning of January, work to the end of March, and talk about all the queer releases happening in those three months. First up, we have Scavenge the Stars by Tara Sim. This book was released on January 7th, and it is a gender-swapped reimagining of The Count of Monte Cristo. So Amaya is our main character. She is demisexual. She's also Desi. There is also a bisexual East Asian main character character. Besides that, there are a bunch of other side characters who are characters of color and are queer. This is a story of redemption and revenge, and I can't wait to read it. Next up, also on January 7th, was Come Tumbling Down by Seanan McGuire. This is the fifth book in the Wayward Children series, and it follows a character who appeared in Every Heart a Doorway and Down Among the Sticks and Bones. This is a portal fantasy series dealing with trauma that has a ton of diversity in its main characters. I'm really excited to get back into this main character's story because she's one of my favorites. I adore her. So this has a sapphic main character. I don't know exactly which word she uses. I think at some point Shannon said that she was pansexual and she has OCD. So if you were a fan of the Wayward Children series, I'm sure you're just as excited as I am to get back into these books and to follow Jack again. The last book for January 7th is We Used to Be Friends by Amy Spaulding. This is a YA contemporary set in high school and it is about two best friends who have been best friends for ages but by graduate they're no longer speaking. So this is about the realities of a friendship breakup of two best friends and how that kind of erodes. One of the girls in this book is bisexual and there is a female-female romance. There are a bunch of other queer side characters as well. I love Amy Spaulding. I love, love The Summer of Jordi Perez, which is the other book by her that I've read. So I'm very eager to read this one as well, even though I'm sure it's going to break me. On January 14th, we have Cleanness by Garth Greenwell. This is adult fiction. It is about a gay American expat living in Bulgaria teaching English. It's a story told in, I believe, six vignettes about loss and love. It's gotten a ton, a ton of early hype, and I'm sure it's gonna break my heart, but I'm also sure that I'm gonna love it. Next, also on January 14th, is Dark and Deepest Red by Anna Marie McLemore. This is why a 
magical realism. It is a retelling of The Red Shoes. Much like all of Mecklemore's books, this centers on an almost entirely Latinx cast, but in the central roles we have a cis Romani girl and a trans guy falling in love. So this starts in 1518 and then it picks up five centuries later. Mecklemore said that they outgade themselves with this ending, so I know that I'm going to love it. I've loved many other Mecklemore books. This, of course, is going to have a huge cast of side characters who are also people of color and super, super queer, but definitely pick up a copy of this one. Moving on, also on January 14th, we have The Better Liar by Tannen Jones, and I can't tell you much about this book. I know that it is queer because the author self-describes herself as queer and as someone who writes about queer women in dark situations. It's about a woman who conceals her sister's death in order to claim their joint inheritance, and she hires an actress to play the role of her sister. I'm assuming this is gonna get real dark real fast. It has the potential to explore a ton of stuff, and like I said, knowing that it's gonna be queer makes me that much more invested in it as a thriller. On January 21st, we have the release of the poetry collection Homie by Dana Smith. Like I said, this is poetry by a Black non-binary author. The collection is rooted in the loss of one of Denez's closest friends, and it is about how living in a world of violence, of xenophobia, of disparity, and living in a body defined by race and queerness and diagnosis is getting more and more difficult. I think this is going to be a beautiful collection. I can't wait to read it. All the reviews I've read so far have been amazing. Also on January 21st, we have the release of Spell Hacker by M.K. England. This is a genre-bending fantasy heist story, which is always, like, my go-to. I love those buzzwords. This is a heist set in a world where magic used to be freely available until something serious happened and a company basically got to commodify magic. And so this is about a group of people who illegally siphon off magic, pulling off what is supposed to be their last heist, which unveils a much darker situation. The author says that this book is super queer, which is unsurprising. That's what M.K. England writes. We have a queer girl main character, a non-binary love interest, plus a bunch of other queer side characters and a bunch of people of color as well. If the rep from their first book, The Disasters, is anything to go by, this is going to be a really, really excellent story. Next on January 21st, we have the release of The Seep by Chana Porter. This is about a gentle but world-changing invasion by an alien species called the Seep. The Seep is offering this utopian universe where if you choose, you can be reborn as something new. This is about a main character named Trina Goldberg Aneka. She is a trans woman happily married to her wife, and then her wife decides that she would like to be reborn, and so Trina is left mourning and unsure about the world. The main character of this book, like I said, is a trans woman. She's also Jewish and native, and this has been compared to Jeff Vandermeer, uh, Carmen Maria Machado, so this is going to be weird weird queer sci-fi about mournfulness and the changing of reality, and I'm really eager to jump in. On January 28th, The Storm of Life by Amy Rose Capetta was released. This is the follow-up to The Brilliant Death, and this is the conclusion to the duology. The Brilliant Death is a book about magic and mafia families and revenge. Something that I think is really exciting about this is that this has non-binary characters on the cover kissing, which is amazing. There are tons of explorations of of gender in the first book, and the author has described this as a non-binary love story, so definitely look forward to that. I loved the first book, and I can't wait to read the second one. Next on January 28th, we have Blood Countess by Lana Popovic. This is a story inspired by Elizabeth Bathory, who was a historical figure often likened to Vlad the Impaler, the inspiration for Dracula. This is a book about a possible murderer. It's about a woman who starts as a chambermaid but works her way through the ranks, um, becomes the countess's confidant and lover, and then some dark stuff happens. This is kind of a dark FF book. I don't know if we're headed towards happiness, sadness. I just know this is gonna be bloody and interesting, and I'm really, really excited to read it. It sounds totally unique. The last January release I want to talk about is A Beautiful Crime by Christopher Boland. This is about Nick and Clay who have both run off from New York and they've decided to make their fortune selling counterfeit antiques 
to an unsuspecting American. Nick and Clay are boyfriends, one is white, one is black, and this is an exploration of crime, of what you're willing to do to make a new life for yourself. It is an adult thriller, and I am so excited to read a gay adult thriller. I just, this sounds perfect. I love crime movies, so I live for crime books, and this sounds brilliant. Okay, let's move into February. On February 4th, we have Belle Revolts by Lindsay Miller. This is a standalone fantasy about two girls who switch lives. Emily is a noble lady who would much rather be holding scalpels than embroidery needles, and Annette is an overworked girl who dreams of belonging to a world of things that are fancier. So they decide to switch lives, and presumably things go awry. One of the main characters of this book is a biromantic ace girl who is potentially involved in a female-female romance, and the other main character is possibly entering a flirtation with a trans guy. Lindsay Miller is probably most known for writing the Mask of Shadows duology, a YA fantasy with a gender-fluid thief as the main character, so I'm really excited to jump into her standalone fantasy. Also releasing on February 4th, we have The Stars We Steal by Alexa Dawn. This is a YA sci-fi book that is a retelling of Persuasion. I've also seen some people compare this to the Bachelor in that it is a matchmaker scenario where the main character, Leo, who is a princess, is expected to find someone who makes a good match for herself, and there's a lot of potential. This has a demisexual main character in Leo. There's also an asexual side character who's somewhat central, and lots of other queer side characters as well. February 4th also brings us the release of The Gravity of Us by Phil Stamper. This is a YA male-male romance. In this book, Cal and Leon are both boys whose lives are uprooted after their parents become involved in a NASA mission to Mars. Um, they both wind up moving to Houston, and they become the center of a media circus for this highly publicized mission, um, and through that they start to fall for each other. I don't know the exact rep for both of these boys, but like I said, it's a male-male romance, and I think this is one of the most hyped debuts of 2020 in YA. Phil Stamper is the nicest person, and I can't wait to read his book. I hope you're ready for this next one. It is Upright Women Wanted by Sarah Gailey. This also was released on February 4th. I have been excited for this release for so long at this point. Like, I have been waiting for this book for ages. This is an explicitly anti-fascist uh, Wild West story, but it's the future American Southwest, and let me just tell you how this book was originally pitched. The original short, like, one-sentence pitch. The future American Southwest is full of bandits, fascists, and queer librarian spies on horseback trying to do the right thing. How amazing does that sound? This is an adult novella with a queer girl main character and a non-binary love interest and a bunch of other queer side characters as well. Honestly, I want to take this moment to say that if you are interested in queer SFF, please look into anything that Tor or any of Tor's imprints are publishing in 2020. Honestly, Tor is like the queerest imprint ever. Everything's gay. So many of the books I've talked about already and so many more books that I'm going to talk about come from Tor, so please look into their publication catalog, support Tor, they are making incredible art right now. Moving on to February 11th, we have The Mercies by Kieran Millwood Hargrave. This is set on an island in the 1600s. It is a Norwegian island where a storm killed all of the men, and this is about two women struggling to survive both the natural forces that are happening, but also men that have been sent to their island to rid the island and this community of witchcraft. This is a slow burn FF romance and it sounds brilliant. Also on February 11th, we have I Know You Know Who I Am by Peter Kispert. This is a story collection, and every single story in the collection centers on a gay main character. This is a collection about the consequences of lying. Every story centers on a gay character struggling with the consequences of a lie he's told that has maybe been revealed or will be revealed, or the interweaving ways that lies can build on each other. If you're new to my channel, you may not know this, but every single month in 2020, I am reading at least one short story collection. This is one of the highest ones on my list. I think it's going to be 
just fantastic. Next I want to talk about The Unspoken Name by A.K. Larkwood, also released on February 11th. This book is the book of my dreams. It is supposedly part high fantasy, part space opera or sci-fi. A lot of people are saying there's huge crossover between fantasy and sci-fi in this book, which is getting a lot of people interested. There's also the fact that this is an incredibly queer story. It's set in a world with no homophobia and there are a ton of queer characters. Basically, this is about a girl who is supposed to be a martyr for her people, but when she goes to sacrifice herself, a wizard appears and offers her another chance, another life. She can go become a spy, an assassin, the wizard's right hand. So she abandons being a martyr and decides to join the baddies, and it sounds amazing. This has a central FF love story, but like I said, it's super queer overall. Tor is blessing us. Next up, the last February 11th release I want to talk about is Ink in the Blood by Kim Smezhkal. This is a YA fantasy with a central FF love story. It's set in a fantasy world where tattooing is a very big deal. People who create tattoos are called inklings, and when they tattoo someone, they're imprinting a message from the divine on that person's skin, and everyone really trusts that system until the two people who are at the center of this story realize that it's a system built on corruption, so they escape and find a theater troupe and possibly retool their magic for different uses. This is yet another fantasy world that is incredibly queer. According to the author, in this world there is no binary, so identity, orientation, expression, it's all along a continuum, and the words that they use are not the words we use because they have a totally different system. So I'm very eager to read this book. I am excited to see a world that is so ingrained in creating a queer society that's different from ours. It's a concept I'm really into and that I really admire, so this sounds like a potential fabulous YA fantasy. Next up on February 18th we have the release of Real Life by Brandon Taylor. This is adult fiction that centers on a black gay man who has recently moved from Alabama to a Midwestern university. He's a biochem graduate student and this is about him facing questions of identity as a black gay man about the struggles of racism and homophobia, how they overlap, the struggles of being oneself in a Midwestern town where everything about you is seen as something that can be critiqued. This is another one of those books that is getting a lot of hype early this year because it is an own voices story and I'm really, really excited to read it. I think that this is going to be just a celebrated release this year. Next up on February 25th, we have the release of Finna by Nino Cipri. This is a science fiction novella that is exploring queer relationships, queer feelings, capitalism, and accountability. It's about a customer in a furniture store who accidentally falls through a portal to another reality and two minimum wage workers who are tasked with finding him. This is a female non-binary romance. One of those characters is a person of color. There's also a main character dealing with mental illness, and this is yet another novella written by a queer a trans author from Tor. Like I said, people, we are blessed. Okay, it's time to move into March. Next, I want to talk about The Winter Duke by Claire Elizabeth Bartlett. This is supposed to be a lesbian political fantasy on ice, whatever that means. So this is a female-female romance. It follows a character named Akata after her brother is named the family heir, and then one day all of Akata's siblings and her parents fall into a sleep. So Akata acquires all of the responsibilities. She is named Duke, and she is given her brother Brother's Warrior Bride. Yes, why a fantasy that sounds brilliant. Next, let's talk about Witches of Ash and Ruin by E. Latimer. This is also being released on March 3rd. As a warning, a lot of books are releasing on March 3rd. It is going to be an expensive day, regardless of the type of books you read. Everything's coming out on March 3rd. This is about a character named Dana who is really only focused on ascending as a full witch, gaining her full power, but she is also dealing with her somatic OCD and the fact that she was recently outed as bisexual in her conservative Irish town. That's right, this is about a bisexual witch with OCD, and I can't wait to read it. I have heard the most incredible reviews of this book, and considering my love for magical, witchy, queer books set in Ireland, this sounds perfect for me. Next, I want to talk about This Town Sleeps by Dennis E. Staples. So our main character is a gay Ojibwe man, and he has entered into a relationship with a white man. It is about their secret relationship struggling with identity. I think this sounds so good. I think it's gonna break me, but I also think it sounds just really, really good. Next up on March 3rd, we have Docile. This is by K.M. Sparza, and and this is a book that is not my traditional 
read. Uh, the tagline of this is, there is no consent under capitalism. This is adult sci-fi where in order to balance out your debt, you can basically enter into a system to become kind of an indentured servant, um, which usually is code for becoming a sex slave. This is very much, though, about the horrors of capitalism. It's also a BDSM male-male romance. There are a ton of trigger warnings for this one, so please look into it, but this is one of those books that's being really, really hyped right now. You basically can't go anywhere on queer book Twitter or Instagram without seeing this book, so we'll just have to see how I feel about it. It's not my traditional read, but it is one of the most hyped queer books of 2020, at least from where I'm standing. We also have Wicked As You Wish by Rin Chapeka, we're still on March 3rd, everybody. Rin Chapeco tends to write exclusively queer YA fantasy. Like, if you've read one of her books before, it's probably queer and it's definitely fantasy. Alex, our main character, is part of a kingdom, the Kingdom of Avalon, and then it is destroyed and they relocate to the entirely unmagical Phoenix, Arizona. Most people don't know who he is. He does have a best friend, Tala, who has a secret of her own. That is that she negates magic. Alex, the main character, is gay and this has a most Filipino cast, and anyone who isn't Filipino isn't white. This is basically entirely people of color. It will be my first Rin Chapeco book, but I am very eager to read the rest of her books, so I am sure I'm really going to like this. When We Were Magic by Sarah Gailey is up next. This is the second time I've said Sarah Gailey in this video. Two books in, like, three months is ridiculous, but you know what? If it means more queer SFF, I guess I'll just have to look past it. <laughs> this is a book about six teens whose magic goes horribly awry. Basically, this group of six friends has always been united over their secret magic, and then one night something terrible happens and a boy is dead and it completely upends everything that has made their relationship work. This has multiple sapphic main characters, so lots of girls who like girls. There's also Muslim and Afghani rep, as well as a main character or characters who have been adopted, if you're interested in more rep. I think Sarah Gailey is an author who is potentially going to be a new favorite. I haven't read any of Sarah's books yet, but they all sound so incredibly queer and magical and perfect for me. Moving on, we have Under the Rainbow by Celia Lasky. This is adult fiction. It is about a group of queer activists who move to what is called the most homophobic city in America. They're there on a two-year mission to make the town less homophobic, so they're there as ambassadors and educators. This has 11 narrators, which is a huge cast, but from what I've seen of early reviews, it's handled really well. And I can't speak for every single character. I would say most, if not all, of the main characters are queer. This is a queer book set in Kansas. I don't think I've ever read a queer book set in Kansas before, so even if it was just that, I would want to read it, but also I think this sounds like a really fascinating book. Next we have Only Mostly Devastated by Sophie Gonzalez. This is a male-male romance and it is a retelling of Greece. There is a white gay main character and a bisexual Venezuelan-American love interest. This is another book that's been on my list for years because queer retelling of Greece is like the greatest combination of words I've ever heard in my life. I am crossing my fingers that they're going to send me an arc. I sent off my requests so like <laughs> hope with me that I'm going to get this book because I am so hype about it. The last March 3rd release that I want to talk about is The Fire Never Goes Out by Noelle Stevenson. Noelle Stevenson, if you don't know, is the creator of She-Ra. She was also one of the creators of Lumberjanes, and she wrote Nimona. This is her memoir. I'm really passionate about graphic memoirs. It's just something that I'm really drawn to. I've read a lot of them, and I have been an admirer of Noelle's for years. I've been obsessed with Noelle and her work for so long now. I've been reading the comics that she uploads at the end of every year, summarizing her life, her struggles with mental health, reading her wife, and I'm just so, so excited to read more of Noelle's words and to read more about Noelle's life. On May 10th, we have The Animals of Lockwood Manor. This is by Jane Healy, and I'm unsure of the rep on this one, but it is on a lot of queer rep lists for 2020, so I'm assuming someone has an answer to this. I just don't. I know it's queer in some way, but I don't know how. This is historical fiction set in 1939, and it is about a woman entrusted with keeping track of all of the exhibits at a natural history museum. There's a potential fantasy element to this and increasing paranoia about things being moved, about people trying to take exhibits. I'm not really sure. There's not a lot I do know about this book, but I do want to read it. That's what I know. On March 17th, we have The Only 
only middle grade book on this list, and that is Goldie Vance, The Hotel Who Done It by Lilliam Rivera. This is a novelized version of the graphic novels or the comic Goldie Vance, which is a historical fiction, very nostalgic 50s inspired comic about a young biracial girl who has a passion for solving mysteries. In the comic there is an initial flirtation between Goldie and a greaser girl, and I'm assuming that will be a thing that is happening in these middle grade books as well. I'm obsessed with Goldie Vance, the comic series, so I know I have to read this middle grade adaptation. Next, also on March 17th, we have Super Adjacent by Crystal Sestari. This is a YA superhero book. It is about two main characters, Claire and Bridget. Claire has always wanted to work with superheroes, and then she gets this coveted internship working for Warrior Nation, which is a community of superheroes. Uh, she also finds herself falling for a girl, a superhero, there. And Bridget is kind of done with working for Warrior Nation. She's been dating this superhero guy for ages and she's just kind of done with the whole thing. But then she meets Claire and they become friends and she knows Claire needs a wing woman, so it goes there. Basically, I have a strong obsession with superhero stories, especially queer superhero stories. I am collecting quite a number of FF superhero books at this point, and I'm always eager to add a new one to the collection. Next up, we have The House in the Cerulean Sea by TJ Klune. This is about a guy who's led a really pretty normal life, and then he is summoned by extremely upper management and sent on this mysterious task. He goes to this island orphanage, this mysterious orphanage, where six extremely extremely dangerous children need to be taken care of. The main character is, I believe, gay and there is a male-male romance. TJ Klune is just an author who has been very, very hyped to me and this sounds weird and wild and wonderful. It is adult fantasy. I think I'm gonna love it. Moving on, on March 24th we have The Empress of Salt and Fortune by Ni Vo. This is an adult fantasy novella. It is about a young royal sent south for a political marriage and it's about their ascent to power as seen through the eyes of their handmaiden. This has a non-binary main character, a cast of entirely people of color, as well as some other queer side characters. I'm sure you're sick of me saying this at this point, but it sounds fabulous. Next we have a YA contemporary, We Were Promised Spotlights by Lindsay Sproul. I think this is ultimately going to be a fun book, despite uh, the pitch I'm about to tell you. This is about a girl named Taylor, who on the outside seems like the perfect person, everyone is obsessed with her, she has a potentially movie star father, she's homecoming queen, she is on every guy's must-date list, and she is super in love with her best friend Susan, which absolutely no one knows about. Um, so this is about Taylor, who on the outside seems perfect, but on the inside, from her point of view, we start to see how much she's dealing with internalized homophobia, with anxiety, with all of these different things that are plaguing her, and it's about her dealing with this and also just deciding to tear down her whole perfect life, potentially. I'm always in it for a great queer YA contemporary. I think that this is another one that might be a new favorite. I haven't read it yet, but I'm Based on this description, I'm feeling like this might be a new favorite of mine. Second to last, we have We Are Totally Normal by Rahul Kanakia. This is about an Indian American boy named Nandan who has his entire life worked out. He knows exactly how the next few weeks are going to go. And then at a party one night, him and his best friend Dave kiss. This isn't necessarily a male-male romance. This is a really in-depth look at Nandan questioning himself, questioning if he is attracted to guys, questioning if he maybe wants to kiss Dave again. So this is a book about potential queerness and exploring identity. But can we just get a hands up for how queer this book cover is? I think it's gorgeous. I am so excited that 2019 and 2020 have become a year of having queer couples on the cover together being openly queer. It's just like really special to me, or I guess in this case not necessarily a couple, but just that open acceptance of not only seeing queer characters on covers, but seeing queer people of color on covers. It's so beautiful and fantastic, and I think that this is gonna be a really special book. And finally, the last book on this list. Coming out on March 31st, we have Look by Zan Romanoff. This is a YA contemporary about a girl with a huge following and how her real life is very different from how her followers perceive her. The book starts with a video of Lulu, our main character, kissing another girl. It goes public, and it was never supposed to go public, and Lulu's boyfriend breaks up with her over it. 
It's about how her life seems perfect on the outside, but inside she's having a total breakdown about what she's doing with her life. It, does anything make sense? And there is this whole thing on top of it. This has the potential for a slow burn FF romance. That's what I'm getting. It has a bisexual girl main character, so that will be a part of it as well. This is one of those covers I'm really obsessed with in 2020 as well. I just think it's like really pretty to look at. And I will tell you more when I read it because I am absolutely determined to read this book. Okay, I have been filming forever. I hope you enjoyed this video. If I left out a queer release that is releasing from January to March that you're really excited about, please let me know about it. Tell everyone down in the comments below. Like I said, be sure to tell me if this was a format you enjoyed. Do you want me to talk about less books in each video? I can do that. This was me trying to be comprehensive, but I know this was kind of a long one. I'm really excited to read books in 2020. We have so many incredible releases. Thank you all so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in another video very soon. Bye!